Hello! Today's screencast is all about how to use Camtasia to record your screencast and edit your recordings. In this video I will be covering the following topics. What can Camtasia do? I will show you how to record your screencast. In that section I will show you what it looks like when you open Camtasia for the first time. I'll show you the Camtasia control box. I'll show you all types, all the microphones, all the video recording and screen capturing that goes in with that control box. I will show you how to switch between Photoshop and Camtasia by producing a fake screencast. Once that video is recorded, I will show you how to edit your video by deleting unwanted sections, separating your audio or your, your sound from your video, and special video and audio effects that you can use to make your uh, video more professional looking. Um, finally, I will show you how to share that final screencast on either YouTube or just saving your video as a video file so you can share it with people through email or something like that. This video assumes that you've seen my Photoshop tutorial. Uh, if you have not, I highly recommend it. Here is a link to that video right there. There's also a separate slide set that you can download from our SlideShare account for you to have written instructions for what I'm going to verbally say and show you show you on the screen. So let's get started. So what can Camtasia do? Camtasia is a recording and video editing software. It can simultaneously record your voice, record what's on your screen, and record a video of you. You're seeing all three of these things right now. You can see my screen, you can hear my voice, and you see a video of me right here. After it's done recording all those things, it can take those separate recordings and put them into one place where you can arrange them in the order you want. You can also edit and add effects to your videos using Camtasia, so it's an all-in-one recording and video editing. Um, I like it because it can do your voice, your screen, and your video. Many recording programs can only do your voice and a video of you. I'll show you the place where you can put them together and edit later on in this screencast. So now that you know what Camtasia can do, I'm going to show you how to record your screencast. I will show you what it looks like when you open Camtasia for the first time. I will show you the main control box that you will use to record, and I will show you the various devices such as your microphones, uh, your screen capturing, and your video recording types of things. So here I'm going to open Camtasia 2. It's on. This is what the icon looks like. Uh, you may be wondering how I'm recording this when I'm going to open it. I'm actually using Camtasia 1 to record Camtasia 2, so I like Camtasia 2 better. It's more user-friendly. It doesn't freeze as often. So, clicking, let it open. Okay, so when you first open up Camtasia, this box appears. I call it the Camtasia control box. So there are, this closes the box, this reduces the box. There are four main commands on here. I'm going to start with this one. This one over here is a microphone and notice right now it's green and you can see that my, uh, the bar is going up and down. That means it's on. Uh, I can use different types of inputs. So like this is the headset that I have uh, and this is this is the built-in microphone in my uh, computer so I can click it off and now there wouldn't be voice. Uh, this button represents my camera. Uh, this camera is what you're seeing with me right now. I can turn it off and it goes away so now my camera is off. Um, let me turn turn the voice back on. Uh, here is custom region. Now this is the part that actually records your screen. So what you need to do in order to select a region of your screen to record for your screencast, you would click on this red button, big red button. What you would want to do is click and drag over the portion of the screen that you want people to see in your screencast. So notice in many of my videos you just see the slide and that's how I do it. You make it so it's just boxing the slide. 
everything that's not in the box will not be shown, so you wouldn't be able to see all this stuff in the final recordings. If you have a specific size you want, you can do the pixel number here. So we would click on this big red button to record, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to bring up another slide so that way I can demonstrate a fake screencast for you to see what goes on behind the scenes. So I'm going to click this arrow to go back, and it brings me back to my original uh, control box. Alrighty then, so now that I'm out, I'm going to ch going to show you how to switch between Camtasia and Photoshop, and then I'm going to record a fake screencast, just as if, just like you're going to do when you make yours. So I'm just going to exit this little box with the red arrow, Ed X, click. Okay, so one thing you need to keep in mind, is on a Mac anyways, is which program is running. So if we look up here, we can see that Camtasia 2 is the active program. But if I just click once on my slide, look, now Photoshop is active. So this is one way we can switch between the two or at least be able to tell which one's running. So I'm going to do a little bit of Photoshop review. So I'm going to change my slide by clicking on the tab. Um, I have already set up layers, so right here on my right in my layer dock, you can see I have my right here layer, so this way I can write on my screen and then delete it without having uh, without having my background get erased. So let's just pretend this is the first slide of my screencast that I want to do. So I'm in Photoshop now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to Camtasia 2 because that's what I want to record in. Click. So now my active program is Camtasia 2. I'm going to go File, New Recording, and look, my uh, control dock is back. So I don't want to have my camera on. I don't, I'm, and, but I do want my screen to be seen in the video. So before I select my screen, I decided I want to put my camera back on. So now all three things are going to be recorded. There is going to be a bit of lag in my video because I'm using, I'm recording on a different recording program at the same time. There's going to be lag. So I'm going to click on my big red button to select my screen. Now I'm going to box just my slide. Just the slide. Okay, so now I am going to hit the record button. Record. Waiting. Waiting. Three, two, one. Okay, so right now my screencast is on. It's recording my video, it's recording my voice, and it's also recording just the part of the screen that is in boxed in green right now. So if I were to actually record a screencast, I would just, you know, start talking like I normally do, you know, like, Hello, today's screencast is all about these types of things. Um, one important thing to note is that Photoshop, uh, Camtasia 2 automatically makes the other program active, so you don't have to do that yourself. So I'm already able to write on the screen, aren't I? Yeah, it's just, there again, there's going to be a bit of lag with everything that I do. So I would just start writing on my screen to say whatever I wanted to, um, and obviously it would be educational, so I'm just giving you an example. So when you're done giving your little spiel and do going through your first slide of your PowerPoint, whatever that is, or whatever, however you want to break it up, you can go to, um, you need to click back on Camtasia 2, and then File, and then stop recording, which will stop recording your screencast, and then it takes a little bit, and then this screen will pop up. I know it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit intimidating because it just like comes out of nowhere, but this is what it looks like. Uh, here's the video that I just recorded. Notice that you could only see my slide and then a little video of myself down here. Uh, and the next bit of this screencast will be all about video editing, um, splice, th putting things together, and just uh, special like uh, added effects, and then sharing your video once you're done editing it.
So what you're looking at right here is what I'm going to call your workspace. Uh, the first part of this tutorial is going to be showing you basic features of this workspace. Uh, if you look right up in here, this is your video, as it would appear if you were to upload it onto YouTube. Uh, these buttons can play your video. Um, or fast forward just like um, a DVD would be so you can hit the play button and then it's playing and then we can fast forward to the end and then we can fast forward to, to well rewind to the beginning and then this fast forwards like this this button does that and another thing we can do to fast forward would be to drag so click and drag this little gray bar and this represents uh, where the video is playing, uh, it shows you what's on the screen, and this gray bar is very important because it will be how we split videos later on in the tutorial. Uh, another important part of the workbench is your uh, timeline. Your timeline down here shows you uh, what videos are present on your timeline. So here is this one that I'm going to highlight in blue. That's just my uh, slide recording, so my slide video. And then this one is my uh, audio and uh, my little picture of myself. So this was; these are the two separate video files that I had recorded, and they're on my timeline. Again, up here, this is my time. Uh, you can zoom in or out with this feature down here. So you can click on this side and zoom out, and then this side to zoom in and out. Notice how the time bars change. Uh, this section over here, I have my media highlighted. That's in blue. That means my media is active. Uh, this has um, this is where I would have all my video and my audio recordings. Again, I usually do each slide in my screencast as a different video, uh, and they would all appear here. And later on, I will show you how to make a new recording. And this is where you would find all of your all of your effects are below your media. So first thing, I'm going to uh, save this project that I have as something new. So yeah, I'm going to go up here to File, Save As, and then I'm going to name this uh, Demo. Oh wow, if I could spell Demo. D-E-M-O, there we go. And then save it. I'm going to replace it because I messed up earlier. Saving, saving. Saving. Okay, so now we have this original file saved. I'm also going to rename the uh, first video that I took because look here, we've got it's called REC0425, whatever. It's a very hard name to remember, so I'm going to rename it. I'm going to rename it Video 1. So now it changed the name on the timeline and it changed the name in the media bin. So at this point, I'm going to show you how to record another video. From your workbench, you can click on this red button right here, this big red button. Click. And this control box opens. Now this is the same exact control box that opened up earlier, and you would record your video the same exact way as you did earlier. So as a review, um, we can see my camera is off. I'm going to turn it on. Uh, my custom region is on and my microphone is on. You can so now I'm ready to record. I'm going to click on this big red button. I am going to click and drag on the portion of the screen that I want to be recorded and then I am going to hit record for my second video. Okay, so now we've learned all about our introduction to the workspace, and our next uh, topic after recording this new video is going to be splitting videos, which is one of the most important functions on Camtasia. So let me stop this. I'm going to go back to Camtasia 2, and I'm going to go File, Stop Recording. There we go. So here is my video that I just recorded. It popped up in my media bin, just like video one. Now I'm going to right click on it and rename it and call it video two. 
Alrighty, so now I'm going to show you all about how to add videos to your timeline, how to separate your audio and video, and most importantly, how to split your videos so that you can delete unwanted sections. So first, I'm going to drag my second video that I just made to my timeline and put it after my first video. So I'm going to click and then drag it, and then here it is, here it is. And then I'm going to put it at the very end, like that. That yellow bar means they're touching. This, like they are touching, they're meeting right on the end, like that. So now we have video one, go straight into video two. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate my video and my audio for the, um, for my video of myself and the audio. So that way you can see all three things at once. So I'm going to click on the uh, portion of video one that I'm talking about. So me and my voice, right click. And then on this, I'm going to click separate uh, video and audio. Okay, so now you can see three tracks. This bottom track, is my slide. This track is my uh, picture of me, my video of me, and then this is just my audio. I'm going to do the same thing for video two. So I'm going to go over to video two, right click, separate audio and video. So now all three things are visible on the tracks. The track function on your timeline is very similar to the layering function on Photoshop, meaning that the one on the bottom of the stack is the one that's on the bottom of the video. So, for example, I can click and drag my slide on video one and put it on top of my little video of myself and look, myself went away. Then watch, watch this portion of the screen. I can click my slide on video one and move it below my video of myself and look, I reappeared. So again, it's very similar to your layering function. So now that you know all about your tracks and separating your audio and video, I am going to show you how to split and move things around. So I'm going to delete a section of video one. I'm going to delete the section that has me waving. If you look over here, you can see that I'm waving. Yeah. So I'm going to delete that. So I'm going to first split my video. I am going to right click on my gray bar there, and then I am going to select split all at playhead. Now what the splitting function did is that it took track, this track up here, this track in the middle, and then this track on the bottom, and it cut them all where I just was. And so now I can move them separately. So I can take this side of the video and move it. I can move this one, and I can move this one. Just by using that splitting section, I can also move this video separately too and the other half. and eek. So that is how we split and then we can move it wherever we want now that they're separated. Uh, I'm going to do it again on the other side. So I'm going to go right click, like I'm done, wait, wait, so I'm going, I'm done waving, done waving right about there. So I'm going to right click and then again split all at playhead and then look, now I have this little section of video little section of video where I am waving. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to highlight all three of those videos. So I'm going to click and drag so that all three sections of the part of me waving, so my audio, the video of me, and the slide are all going to be deleted at the same time. So they're all blue, that means they're all active, and I am going to do right click, and then I'm going to select ripple delete and you'll see what ripple delete does okay what ripple delete just did is it took those three clips 
that I had selected and deleted them and it moved everything, all the tracks behind it, up. Let me show that again. So I'm going to do edit, undo. So now they're back and then I'm going to click edit, redo and now they're gone. And that's what your ripple delete function does. And that is how you split your videos. Let me show you another example of splitting to make sure we get it. I'm going to split again. I'm going to split video two now. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to take off the last portion of video two, which would be where I'm just ending the video. So I'm going to again, right click, split all it, playhead. And now I have this separate and this separate and this separate so now I can click and drag select all three and now this time instead of ripple deleting I'm just going to delete because they're at the end of the video so it doesn't really matter there's nothing behind them why would I ripple delete so delete so there we go um, I'll show you another way that you can use the splitting function let's say I recorded out of order and I wanted something else ahead. So I'm going to right click and then I'm going to split all at playhead. And let's say I want these three sections to be in front of these three sections. I can highlight all three of these videos. Oh. I think they're all highlighted. Yes, yeah, so all of these are highlighted. And I can drag, click, and then drag, 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 drag. And now they're at the end of the videos. But there is a big space right here. So I am going to select all six of them and then move it up. So there we go. We, I've just showed you how to reorder your videos, I've showed you how to split, but now I'm going to show you how to split just one track at a time and just delete part of your video. Alrighty, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete part of the video of myself in video one. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to delete myself from about 45 seconds to about one minute through the video. I'm going to select the track of me. So the one in the middle is the track of my, uh, my face. And then I'm going to hit, uh, I'm going to right click on my little gray bar. And then I am going to click split selected at playhead this time. Now what that did is that it only uh, cut the middle track so I can move this separately but this is still this one up on top and the one on bottom are still one big piece so I'm going to uh, finish what I was doing I'm going to click on the video of me and I'm gonna drag to about one minute and then I'm going to right click and then I'm going to do split selected at playhead and now this little video of me from 45 to one minute is separate from everything else. And so I'm going to right click and then I'm just going to click delete this time. So now there's a big space right here from 45 seconds to a minute. But if we were to play, the only difference is that my video of me is not there. The slide is still there and the audio is still there. So that is how you would delete just a part of your video. And it would work the same if you wanted to delete a part of the slide or if you just wanted to delete part of your audio. So now you're experts at splitting, right? So separating clips of videos, you know how to delete, uh, sections of your video, you know how to ripple delete, you know how to just uh, separate your audio from your video. So the next topic, going back to Photoshop, the next topic is going to be adding video and audio effects, which is a ton of fun and can make your video look uh, more professional and it can just make things go more smoothly. So all of your fun little effects are going to be in this menu right here underneath your media. So I'm going to show you just 
an example from each of these. Again, this is not all inclusive. In order to go through all of the an animations and fun little effects, it would take way too long. I'm going to show you the effects that I think will be useful to you. So first is going to be under annotations. This is one way that you can add text to your screen. So you can add fun little arrows with text in them, just text boxes, and those types of things. So I'm just going to add a text box. So what I do is I click on, I, I'm going to do, I like this one, so I'm going to click on it, then I'm going to drag it to my timeline, and no, no, notice it's its own little bar, it's its own little track now, and I can drag it to wherever I want, and if I right click on it, I can show the properties, and then over here, once I do show the properties, I can change the color um, of the back, so that would be changing it from red to blue. I could also change the color of the uh, outline, which would be here, make it green, <laughs> or make it yellow, and then you can change a whole bunch of that stuff. I can click over on the big T text properties, I can change my font and my text color and my size, all of that kind of stuff, and I'll leave you to figure out most of this, but I can just say, click in the box, I can change my text, like that, and then going back to my timeline, after I've made it the way I want it to, I can change the length of this clip, so I can uh, make it shorter, like so, make it longer, and then... I'll show you what it looks like when you play. And obviously it would be there it is. But I can move. I can move this, so I can move the text to appear where I want it to. So watch again. So that's just how you would do text box. All of these other uh, text box work the same way as the one I just showed you. I don't think transitions are that important, so I'm not going to show them to you. You can explore them on your own. I also don't think animations are that important, so I'm not going to show you them either. I'm going to show you something called the clip speed function, which I think is very important. So uh, let me just drag it to my timeline. I'm going to click, and then I'm going to drag it to go to this video. So what your clip speed can do is it can change uh, how fast your video is going. So if I click on this little arrow that just showed up, and you say clip speed 100%. If I were to drag the video out, notice how it's slowing down. So my clip speed is now 85%. Now this function is very useful for people like me who talk too fast. And so this way you can slow yourself down, or if you were talking too slow, you can speed yourself up this way, too. And obviously, if you were to actually use this, you would want to slow down and speed up all videos on the track the same amount. So, like, I would want to make, if I made my audio 82.1%, I would want to make this video 82.1% and this video 82.1% also, so they would all match still. Yep. And so that's very important for people who talk too fast. <laughs> uh, another fun audio effect, so I'm going from video to audio, would be your raising and lowering your volume, which is very important. So I am going to, um, this only works again on audio tracks. So I'm going to click, and then I'm going to click on this part right here. So I'm going to add it to this video. Now notice we have a little arrow. The tail of the arrow shows where the uh, the effect begins and then I can drag the tip of the arrow all the way across the entire video so now the entire video can have its volume raised or lowered so uh, going up to this menu here we can see it's now at 150 percent but I can change this up to 200 or 299 I can change this up to 200 percent if I wanted to um, so now my video is pretty loud. I can make it softer, louder. I could mute the section. Uh, so th that's just one way. If perhaps you're, uh, if you record it too softly or too loudly, this is one way that you can fix that. Um, that's I, and then the lowering volume works the same way as raising volume. You would click and drag. I just and then you can drag it across. 
something, right? So it shows you that your volume for from here to here would be 67% of this original volume. The final video effect that I'm going to show you is going to be a cursor effect. Uh, this effect only works on clips that have your cursor in it. So I am going to click and drag to this section of video one where my slide was and where my cursor was recorded. So I'm going to click. Now, let me show you the difference. Here is my cursor by itself, and then here is the cursor after the cursor magnify. Everything is, uh, my cursor is magnified and this helps if you're going over a very small portion of the screen uh, and obviously you wouldn't want to do it for as long as I have you'd only want to do it for a section and then that's where the splitting function would come in so again to review I showed you how to add text like this button like this guy up here I showed you how to add text I didn't show you transitions because I don't think they're that important and they're fairly self-explanatory I sh did not show you any animations I did show you how to add your clip speed, which is used to slow down or speed up your video. I showed you how to lower and raise your volume, and I showed you how to use your cursor magnify. So now that I've showed you how to basically make your video from the raw video files all the way to your finished product, I'm now going to show you how to share your video. Okay, so our next topic is going to be all about sharing your video. Uh, I will show you the different video formats you can export your video as. I will show you how to save that project file that you've been working on as an MP4, so an actual video on your own computer. I will show you how to upload directly to YouTube from Camtasia, and then I will show you how to manually upload this exported file to uh, YouTube. So going back to Camtasia 2, uh, we do all of our exporting, no matter what it is, through our share function, so clicking on share up at the top. I'm going to first show you how to um, advanced export, which will save your project file as a video that can be viewed on uh, programs other than Camtasia, so advanced export. Um, now I get to name my video, so I'm going to call it Final Demo. And then here, uh, here I can choose the different file type. All of these are uh, different video types. I usually choose MP4. Uh, this is QuickTime Movies, right? With uh, with Apple products, QuickTime Movies. You can go to AVI, which is another popular format, but. I would suggest doing MP4 because it's compatible with both Windows and YouTube and Mac. So. I'm going to save it as an mp4. Uh, I can choose where I save this demo, so I'm going to save it in Bethany's screencast, this little folder. I could have saved it on my desktop or anywhere else that I wanted to. And then I'm going to click export, which will save this project as a video. So export. Now it's going to take a little while, so uh, yeah, we're just going to wait here for a little bit. Alrighty, so once your export is finished, uh, this little box will appear, and then I'm going to show you the, what it looks like in your finder. So I'm clicking Reveal in Finder, Final Demo.mp4. I'm going to click on it, and then it should play in QuickTime. See? Yeah, so this is playing in QuickTime. It's just an actual video file that other programs can view. There we go. So there you have your regular exporting. Next, I'm going to show you how to upload directly to YouTube. Okay, we've just learned how to export to your computer. Now I'm going to show you how to share directly to YouTube. So we click share and then YouTube. And then here you would sign in with your YouTube password and uh, username. So materials, concepts, and then the password. And then we'd sign in and this is important to be sure you have a stable internet connection before moving on because you're going to go directly to the internet sign in so now we signed in as materials concepts you can title your video here so we're gonna call it final demo final demo 
just as uh, just as we named our mp4 file earlier I can tag tagging would be search terms that people could look up your video under so I could do demo Camtasia etc this would be a description of the video so a demonstration of Camtasia there we go and then here we can change our privacy I'm gonna make it private but you can make it public so then you would click share after filling in all these things and again you can always edit these later from your YouTube page which I'll show you later so we share it and then it would just take a while to go out to YouTube and it would be the same thing as before so this is gonna take a little bit so I'm just gonna pause the video now that the video is done exporting, it's now uploading the video directly to YouTube. Okay, well, sometimes if your internet connection isn't that great, you'll have an unexpected YouTube response from this sharing function. However, just try again. Normal internet connections won't do this. Uh, if it were to have worked, you would have just said, uh, you know, upload complete and it would appear on your YouTube channel. But I'm going to show you how to directly upload to YouTube without using this uh, share function on Camtasia. So now that you've seen my failed attempt at sharing directly to YouTube, I'm going to show you how to just upload that saved video file to YouTube instead of using this share function up here that I tried to do last time. I prefer uploading videos in this way that I'm just about to show you because you have a copy. It forces you to have a copy of the video on your computer, which if you were to have just shared this way um, that I showed you last time, then uh, you would not have that video file on your computer. So here we go. I am actually going to shut quit Camtasia because we don't need it for this step. And I'm gonna to go to my internet. Alrighty, so now we're gonna go using our internet to youtube.com. Okay, from the YouTube's homepage, I'm gonna to go to the sign in button in the top right, that's blue. And then if you need to create an account, YouTube will walk you through the steps if you click on this button, but I'm just going to upload onto, um, I'm going to assume you already have an account, so here we go, put in your email or your username and then your password. And then YouTube will take you to this page um, what you should do is you should click on your name or your picture up here and then go to this button here that says video manager click and then here we can click on this upload button right here okay so here we go uh, this is the page that you're looking at so now we can select a file to upload so I'm going to click on the arrow and then I'm gonna to go to our final demo mp4 that I showed you how to save earlier in the video so I'm gonna click on it and then choose and then here is the screen that will come up uh, you can title your video here you can change your privacy settings. Again, I'm going to make this uh, private. You can change the category here, which should be, I'll keep it under education. And then you can do your tagging and your description, very similar to the share function directly from Camtasia that I showed you earlier. Again, I prefer this way because you're going to have to go in and pick your category and your thumbnails later on anyways. So why not just do it when you first upload it? and you have the file saved on your computer. I find this to be the easier way, but some people prefer the, you know, one-stop kind of, I'm just in Camtasia, I'm gonna just keep going in Camtasia. Oh, it's important to note while your uh, video is uploading, you can edit these descriptions. So we can also tag, so demo uh, Camtasia, 
etc. We have our education and our setting is still on private. Okay, so now once it's done uploading, they um, there's a little bit of time delay for when your video is uh, processing. Uh, wow, this is going pretty fast. There's only one minute remaining, so there we go. So your upload is complete now. Um, I can choose the thumbnail that I want to pick. I'll just pick this one. And then we save our changes. And then your video will be live at this link here. So we'll click on it. And here is your video page. Um, now you could uh, share this link with people that you want to have. And yeah, there you go. So now your video is up on YouTube. Um, you have the file on your computer. And now you know how to use Camtasia. The screencast has successfully discussed the, the fo following topics. We learned all about what Camtasia can do. Uh, we've learned how to record a screencast from beginning to end. We've learned what happens when you open Camtasia for the first time. We've learned all about the control box. We've learned all about the different microphones, the video recording, the screen capturing that goes on. Uh, we've learned about switching between Photoshop and Camtasia. We've learned how to delete sections of your video by splitting and with deleting. Remember, there were two types, ripple and normal deleting. We learned how to separate our audio from our video. We learned all about this video and audio effects that can be added. We've also learned how to share your video on YouTube and uh, how to save your project as a video file for you to send out and to have on your computer and also how to upload a video to YouTube. So if you have any questions please leave them in the comment section. I do apologize for the length of this video but it was a lot of stuff to cover. <laughs> so uh, thanks for watching.